So my point is, I, I don't like talking to people on planes. <laughs> my trick is to bring a pillow with me, like a full bedroom pillow, every flight. And I was flying home from a gig and I put the pillow down, I put my head down and the flight attendant comes racing over and she says, you can't have a pillow in the exit row. And I said, but I do. It appears we're at an impasse. She said, well, what happens if we crash? I said, it'll help. <laughs> it's, it's a pillow. I don't know if you know much about these, but they're soft, they float. Those are the qualities of something I'd like to bring with me to a plane crash. If I knew that we were gonna crash, I could bring anything in the world. I'd bring a pillow and a second plane. Those would be the two things I'd like to have. She said, no, what if we crash and the pillow falls, someone has to get by it, what will you do? I said, oh, in that case, I'll, uh, I'll let them step on my pillow <laughs> because I'm not a monster. <laughs> and you'd have to be for someone to be on fire, screaming, and just say, could you please watch the pillow? <laughs> yeah, burning alive, whatevs, that cost me $8. I won't even be there to say any of that. I'm in the exit row. I'm the first one off the plane. <laughs> but she keeps at it. She said, no, what if the pillow slows them down? <laughs> what if a pillow slows someone down during a plane crash? <laughs> it's their time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just gonna die in a dumb way tomorrow. Why are we trying to save them? <laughs> what do we need that person for? Get rid of the weakest link, strengthen the chain. If you can't go buy a pillow in a plane crash, be like, I have to get. Ha! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> think, Jerry, think. Ha! <laughs> we didn't lose a doctor when that happened, okay? We lost someone dumb enough to not be able to tell the difference between kids and dogs. That's who we lost. <laughs> my apologies to my cousin. <laughs> but she kept at it. <coughs> she kept at it. She said, what if it slows them down? What if, what if it obscures their path? What if it obscures their path? I think you mean obstructs their path. I understand that the word obscures and obstructs, those words start the same, but they get real different. And I don't want you mixing up words. That's the most important part of your job, to know what words mean. You make announcements in times of peril. I need you to know what words mean. I don't want there to be an accident. Be like, everyone head toward the explosion. I mean exit, ha <laughs> ha. I don't want that. But let's explore what you did mean. What if the pillow obstructs their path or obscures their view of their path. How hilariously tiny are the people on this airplane? <laughs> that a pillow is gonna stop anyone from getting out during, a I've never seen a movie, they get to the end of a tunnel, turn back, it's a pillow! I've never seen that. <laughs> the dude on the other end of the aisle for me was so big, he could Kool-Aid man his way out of the plane, which was particularly funny because he was wearing all red, but nobody laughed. <laughs> She just kept pushing. She said, you're gonna have to give me that pillow. And I said, you're gonna have to give me a good reason. And then she said the strangest thing I've heard in my whole life. She said, crazy things can happen during a plane crash. A paper cut could decapitate someone during a plane crash. <laughs> what? A paper cut could decapitate someone during a plane crash. Those words in that order on purpose. What else is ping pong around her head? Like, I like peanut butter, do you swim? Like, what else is up there? <laughs> that she landed on a paper cut that could decapitate somebody in a plane crash, and I just said, that's not a thing, because I was out of clever. <laughs> I'm a pretty quick guy, but the chamber was empty. Well, conversation's a two-way street. I say something that leads you to say something peripherally related to what I just said. 
But that's not what happened. Because all I said was, you're gonna have to give me a good reason. I didn't say, say something that'll mess me up for 10 years. I didn't say that. But that's what she heard. Because she said a paper cut could decapitate somebody in a plane crash. And I wish I had thought about it. I would have said something smarter. I'd have said, no! No! I will not accept the premise that paper could decapitate somebody in a plane crash. I'll accept the premise that paper, at the exact right velocity, at the exact right angle, could sever a vein, you could bleed out. But paper is not going through bone. Paper is not going through bone. If it could, paper, rock, scissors would finally make sense. But it doesn't. And it never will. And why are we talking about paper? We're talking about pillows a second ago. There's paper everywhere on this airplane. There's a sky mall in front of me. There's a doku in front of me. There's a dude in 7B with the USA Today that's going to decapitate every last one of us. Your safety instructions are written on a piece of paper. But I did not have all that. So I just said, that's not a thing. But the crazy train had a second stop to make. Because she said, you don't know, you've never been in a plane crash. And I said, well, you're talking to me, so you haven't either. I'm assuming she's not the survivor of a crash we never heard of, just the great paper cut crash of 2012. And <laughs> we never heard about it because the news didn't run anything about it. They weren't right to her house. They tried. They were like, we have a few questions for you. She said, who are you? They said, we're with the paper. She said, I'm afraid of paper. And then they never got the story. Now she goes to work every day surrounded by a mountain of Sudokus and Sky Malls and she perseveres even though she has PTSD, which is very serious, paper traumatic stress disorder. It's incredibly serious. <laughs> Makes opening letters very difficult for her, but she perseveres because she's an American hero. <laughs> or she's a nutball on a power trip. <laughs> Probably that one. <laughs> so I gave her the pillow. I just want it to be over. There's no arguing with unearned authority. So I gave her the pillow and it was over for about three seconds. Because I gave her the pillow, I put my sleep mask on and she shook me, which is assault, but she shook me. And she said, you're gonna have to give me that sleep mask. And I lost my mind, are you kidding me? I was like, are people gonna have a problem getting by this also? Is cotton on a rubber band gonna kill everybody in the airplane? So well, what happens if, if you have to take it off? If you crash, we have to take it off. I said, then I'll take it off. It's not locked. What are you talking about? It's a magic trick, Waha! what is the problem? She said, well, anything that slows you down could kill you. I said, why did you just put me in a seatbelt, you murderer? She said, well, what happens if we crash and you're asleep? What will you do? I said, I will wake up. That's what I'll do. <laughs> I'm not sleeping through a plane crash. What kind of narcoleptic family do you have that you think I could sleep through a plane crash? Everyone around me is on fire, screaming. I'm like, five more minutes, mommy. Do you think that's a possibility? <laughs> also, if we crash and I'm asleep, don't wake me. <laughs> Who wakes someone up to die? Be like, hey, hey, sleepy head. Yeah, you almost missed all this. You were gonna die without knowing. We wanted to make sure that you died with fear in your heart. We understand that you have a choice when it comes to air travel. We'd like to thank you for flying United.